democratization at Ginkgo Bioworks. I really like how across different quarterly updates that we've got at Ginkgo Bioworks recently, Jason, he's really been thinking about how to reinvent himself and how to stay creative and ahead of the curve. And although they're not ahead of the frickin' revenue curve because the revenue was even lower this time, he's ahead on all the other curves, which accounts in my book, Jason. And in particular, Jason was talking a lot about in the quarterly update about democratization and how this plays into maybe encouraging people to be able to use the foundry more easily from the fact that they can just sign a lab data as a service type agreement, those LDOS, you know, another new type of business terminology and term in this quarterly update from Ginkgo Bioworks. And you know, unfortunately, I don't know how this is going to go for you, Jason, you know, in my opinion, and I think it's kind of very clearly echoed by other types of individuals who are analysts who are asking questions on your call. They were asking questions pertaining to the fact is that how do you quantify the, uh, the economic impact that you expect from these different types of agreements? And I really feel like, unfortunately, maybe the economic impact from these types of deals could turn out to be inconsequential because they had even announced this from a couple of months ago and it really still seems to, at least to me, and obviously to the investors, if they're asking about how the economic impact of a lab data or service or democratization at Ginkgo Bioworks could play out, is very difficult to quantify because even if they are trying to lower um, the threshold for some type of financial commitment from a potential customer, it still shows that if they really have to keep lowering this threshold to have some type of involvement or use of their foundry, it's really demonstrating about not only how their foundry is still a difficult sell, but all that investment and automation that they still have to do, it's still necessary pretty much for them to try to reach the EBITDA break even point. And besides the RIF, as they had referred to it, I really think that it's obviously very, very unfortunate and concerning that they have to sacrifice so many people to get to the RIF. And obviously, some people at Ginkgo Bioworks, they may feel that whatever they're trying to do is best for the company. But really, there's going to be unexpected impacts or unexpected trade-offs between them trying to perform such an aggressive cut in their workforce in the quality of their work, which I'm not sure how we'll receive updates about this, but it could very easily translate to perhaps another decrease in cell engineering revenue like the previous quarter or some other type of, um, a, you know, unfavorable financial performance like how we had received um, in the most recent quarterly update.